Good morning. I'm Ross Turk, the Vice President of Community at Ink Tank, and I'm here today to talk about Ceph, which is a massively scalable storage solution with integration and cloud platform. So before I talk about Ceph, I'd like to talk about the current state of the storage industry. It breaks down roughly into two large categories, traditional enterprise storage and open source solutions. I'm sure there's many more, but these are the two kind of big areas of technology today. Uh, with traditional enterprise storage, what you end up with is very large hardware-based appliances that are expensive, and they're single-use appliances. So when you buy a large storage appliance, you're buying it just for storage. It's not going to be used for anything else. It's just single-use hardware, and it's very expensive. Another thing that we've noticed is that uh, traditional hardware-based storage tends to have been built for a scale-up world, not a scale-out world. And the scale-out offerings that a lot of the traditional storage vendors have seem to be kind of an awkward retrofit. They don't seem to really be built for a scale-out world. They seem still to be built for a scale-up world. And that's, they're, they're very good at scale-up, but they're not really built for scale-out. And as a result of that, particularly when we're talking about the cloud as, uh, as, as a sort of topic, the scalability becomes limited very, very quickly. In addition, these technologies were completely not developed with cloud scale in mind. They were developed with enterprise scale in mind or you know, web or internet scale in mind, but not with cloud scale in mind. And cloud scale has got this massive scale out sort of, sort of idea, and a lot of the traditional storage systems haven't really thought about it that way. On the other hand, we have a bunch of open source storage solutions like Gluster and Luster and things like that. And these were usually built to solve a particular problem. For example, Gluster and Luster were built as distributed file systems uh, to solve that particular problem. Uh, there are other open source storage systems that were built to solve object storage needs. Um, but they were really just built to solve a particular problem. And there are usually some challenges in how you manage them and how reliable they are and how you can get them to perform the way you want them to perform. So we're finding that there's still a lack of maturity in open source storage solutions. So to introduce Ceph, uh, I'd like to talk about a few things that created the environment where Ceph can thrive. And the first is an explosion of storage needs. People are storing so much more information than they were storing before by just a, a completely different scale. And the cloud is driving this. Uh, the internet in general is driving this. And economic factors are also driving this. Virtualization in the cloud is another thing that makes Ceph really necessary because you have, again, pushing this scale out idea as opposed to the scale up idea. When you start virtualizing, uh, you have all kinds of virtual machine disk images to worry about and things like that. It's a totally different type of storage need. On top of that, you have the efficiency required by the cloud. You need to be able to spin up and tear down this storage instantly or near instantly in order for it to work for the cloud. It also needs to be very easy to operate. If it's not super, super simple to operate or super simple to script and get your DevOps things working, then it, it won't work in the cloud environment. And of course, there's always cost pressure, especially now that things are scaling out. There's always cost pressure. Of course, it also has to be readily available. If you're doing an internal cloud deployment, for example, and you need you know, 10, petabyte or 10 terabytes of storage, it's much better if you can go build that storage network without talking to a vendor, without having to sign contracts or NDAs or anything like that. You need readily available technology. And that's, in, in part, pushing this demand for open technology. Open source technology is readily available, and that's what makes it so powerful. So enter Ceph. Ceph is an open source solution. It's what we call software-defined storage, which is kind of buzzword compliant. People are talking about software-defined networking. This is software-defined storage. It's a storage solution that works based on just its software, which means, of course, that it runs on commodity hardware. And by commodity hardware, I mean everyday hardware, hardware you can get from a, from a vendor like Dell or HP or a vendor like that. And it, it, Ceph runs on top of this commodity hardware. In addition, Ceph is a universal storage system. It's not just a distributed file system. It's not just scale out NAS or, or iSCSI. It's not just an object store. It's all of that. It's object block and file in a single storage system, which makes it really powerful. It's also super easy to provision uh, when you want to add new, cluster, new, new nodes to your cluster, you spin up new software on the commodity hardware. Uh, on commodity hardware. It's, it's a lot simpler than it is to, say, for example, double your, your NetApp capacity. And it's self-managing. When nodes go up and nodes go down, Ceph understands how to rebalance the network. It understands how to keep operations up in a degraded fashion. Uh, it understands how to, how to grow a cluster to take up all available hardware and still get a, a distribution of data that makes sense. 
and it's massively scalable. There's no part of the Ceph architecture that was not built to scale out. And that's something that's really important when you're looking at a, a cloud scale distributed storage system. And of course, in order to accomplish this, it has to also have no single point of failure. Now, this all kind of sounds too good to be true, right? Software-defined storage on commodity hardware, universal object block and file storage, rapid provisioning, self-managing, and completely scalable with no single point of failure. Sounds like a really tall order, and that's what Ceph is trying to, trying to accomplish and, and has. So this is the Ceph universal storage system. Uh, it's uh, a universal distributed object store. Uh, and on top of that object store, we have object interfaces, block interfaces, and file interfaces. So we, we can really target six types of data uses. The first is object storage. Ceph provides object storage that is compatible with the S3 and Swift APIs, which allows you to build applications that can store assets uh, really efficiently without, uh, without a whole lot of developer overhead. Cloud storage is another thing that Ceph does. It has a, a virtual block device that allows you to put virtual machine images inside Ceph uh, and use it to spin up VMs. It can also do enterprise storage, again, with virtual block devices for the iSCSI. Also, a distributed file system that allows you to have sort of work group servers and that sort of thing. Uh, it can also support high performance computing. Uh, it's got a drop and replacement uh, shim for HDFS and Hadoop, for example. And uh, a lot of people that we're talking to about Ceph are currently using it in HPC context. Uh, big data as well, uh, again, with, with, with the Hadoop plugin, uh, can also handle sort of big data for massive amounts of data operations. And finally, application storage. And this is something not a lot of people think about with Ceph is that Ceph is also an application platform. You can build applications on top of Ceph using the underlying object store as, as, a, as a powerful storage mechanism. The same way you would think about MySQL, you can think about Ceph as part of your application stack. <clears throat> so Ceph is integrated into cloud platform with multiple storage methods at this point. You can integrate the block storage as one of your primary storage pools for, uh, for, for, for cloud platform. You can also have object storage via the S3 APIs or programmatically through the uh, language bindings that Ceph has. So we have both block and object inside Cloud Platform integrated today. We also have file system storage available uh, if you want to provide a shared file system to the virtual machines in your cloud or to other clients in your cloud. And again, it's all open source software on commodity hardware. This technology has been validated by Ink Tank and Citrix both. Uh, the block storage capabilities are built into Cloud Platform today. The uh, services support and training are available from Ink Tank. And of course, we're Citrix ready and verified for Cloud Platform. So going into a little bit of detail about what Ceph actually is. Ceph is, at its most base level, Rados, which is the Reliable Autonomic Distributed Object Store. So we've taken the opposite approach from a lot of universal storage stacks in that we built the object store first and built everything else on top of the object store. So one of the things we built on top of the object store is Librados, which is language bindings for C, C++, Java, Python, Ruby, and PHP that allow you to get really rich access to the underlying object store. But that's not all that, that we've built as an object store in a library. That's cool, but that's not everything. On top of that, we've also built Rados Gateway, which is a bucket-based REST gateway that's compatible with S3 and Swift. So it has buckets, it has accounting, it has everything you would want for uh, essentially building an S3 competitor. And the case study I'll be presenting later is somebody who did exactly that. They built an S3 competitor. The next piece is RBD, which is short for the Rados block device. The Rados block device is a reliable, fully distributed block device with a Linux kernel client and boot support in QMU and KVM. So the upshot of this is you can take a disk and you can split it into a bunch of pieces, a bunch of tiny blocks, spread it throughout the object store so that you have massive parallelism on reads and writes. Then you can map that to a Linux device and pass it to a virtual machine and boot off of it. So your virtual machines can boot off of essentially thousands of hard drives instead of just one. And that's, that's really, really powerful for a lot of people, especially because it also allows you to do things like take a virtual machine image and copy it instantly. Uh, instead of having to wait for it to copy, you can actually copy it a thousand times instantly, boot up a thousand VMs, and they won't take up any additional space until they start writing to var log or wherever they're going to write to. So super powerful. Rados block device is very, very powerful. And then finally, we have CephFS, which is the distributed file system written, again, on top of Rados, the underlying object store. What's really interesting about CephFS is that by approaching the scale-out problem in the object store, 
As opposed to building a distributed file system, we've actually built a distributed object store and then a file system on top of the object store, which allows you to tackle a lot of the problems that you get in a scale-out storage system with a much simpler idea, object storage versus file system. Then on top of that, we built the file system. And the way we built it is by having separate metadata servers that are also scale out, that can use what's called dynamic subtree partitioning to give responsibility of different subtrees to different metadata servers instantly. So CephFS is probably the most advanced distributed file system out there. It's definitely the one that's been built from the ground up to scale best. So why Ceph? Ceph is, uh, Ceph is, is again, an open source project. So we don't know who's using it because everybody already has it. Uh, people come to Ink Tank all the time and they say, where can I buy Ceph? And I say to them, you can't, you already own it because the whole world already owns it, it's open source. But we do know of a couple of installations that are, that are really powerful. First off, Ceph is powering DreamHost, which is a service provider based in Los Angeles with their S3 competitor, competitive product. They're also powering the products of Piston Cloud and MetaCloud and a lot of other cloud service providers. So Ceph is currently seeing a lot of adoption amongst those who are building public and private clouds. Another thing that's interesting about Ceph, why, why, why you should pay attention to Ceph, is that Mark Shuttleworth, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but Mark Shuttleworth is the co-founder of Canonical. Uh, he, he went to space um, and he gave us a million dollars to make sure that Ceph grew as a community and that the software became more, more mature. So we have a lot of investment from the open source community, a lot of investment from open source luminaries. Also, 451 Research had this to say about us. Ceph's scale-out architecture and its ability to provide file, block, and object storage should attract interest from service providers and enterprises. Two things were mentioned in the 451 report in this quote directly, the scale-out architecture and the ability to provide file, block, and object storage in the same cluster, the unified storage platform. So the industry's also been fairly enthusiastic about uh, commercial support offerings for Ceph. When we launched Ink Tank in May to provide support for Ceph, uh, we were put on a few different lists. Uh, companies to watch from SD Times, six storage startups to watch from InfoStore, and the 10 coolest storage startups of 2012 from CRN, which is interesting praise, but it also shows that there's been enough demand for Ceph that people are excited that there's a company that will stand behind it now. So DreamHost is our parent company, uh, and uh, they're also our, our best customer, which is kind of like getting a car loan from your dad, but uh, it's still a very good validation of the technology. So DreamHost approached the industry with a few challenges and opportunities. The first was they needed storage that could be deployed at large scale. Again, with the scale. I'm going to talk about scale all day. Scale, 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 that's all it is. They needed storage that could deploy at large scale. They also needed it to be managed in a cost-effective way because DreamHost is all about getting the, 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 the lowest cost to their customers. They also wanted to make sure it could be brought to the market very, very quickly because they didn't feel like there was a lot of time to waste getting into public cloud offerings today. So they wanted something that, was, that could be scaled, that could be cheap, and that could be fast. And you usually don't get all three. They also wanted something very particular, and this is something special for DreamHost. They wanted to make sure people could deploy uh, applications against Dream Objects, which is their S3 competitive product, and then they could uh, move those objects to their own deployment if they wanted. So they wanted to make sure whatever tool they chose could be deployed by people on their own infrastructure if they wanted to, and there was no lock-in. It was very important to DreamHost. So of course, the solution that they ran into, uh, that, that they chose, was Ceph. So, Dream Objects is their, is their product. It's a cost-effective public cloud storage service. It's based on Ceph. It has API compatibility with S3 and Swift through Rados Gateway. So really what DreamHost deployed is just Ceph with web load balancers in the front. And then they built some user interface items to allow you to manage your account and check your usage and utilization and browse through your objects and buckets and deal with authentication. But really, it's Ceph, pretty much Ceph. When you, when you make a request to Dream Objects, you're hitting Rados Gateway. And the result is that they were able to launch rapidly, and they were able to launch at a very large scale. They have a three terabyte working cluster for Dream Objects today, and they're able to keep the cost very low. It's just seven cents per gigabyte per month. So how to get started with Ceph? Um, I'm sure everybody wants to go download it right away. And the good news is that you can. The technology is out there, and it's freely available. So you can download Ceph. You can try it today. 
If you visit Ceph.com, you can get Ceph deployed and starting to uh, store data in just a few minutes. In the documentation, there is a five minute quick start guide that quite literally, if you have an Ubuntu thing already installed, is a five minute quick start guide. It'll get Ceph up and running in five minutes. Also, we'd like people to visit inktank.com to understand the company behind Ceph, the company that will stand behind Ceph and that will provide support and services, consulting, and training to help you have a successful deployment of Ceph. So in summary, Ceph is massively scalable open storage for your cloud. Massively scalable, no single point of failure. Every component was built to be scale out. It's open storage, meaning that it's software based. You run it on commodity hardware. The software is free. The software will always be free. Ceph is integrated into cloud platform today to provide block, object, and file storage. Not just one kind of storage, all kinds of storage in the same cluster. So you manage it once instead of managing it three times. It's all open source. Again, it's all on commodity hardware. And it's backed by Ink Tank with support and services, and it's validated by Citrix. Thank you very much. <laughs>